In preparation of this screencast, I went ahead and created a folder called Book on my C drive. And in this folder, I placed a file I called a book.txt. And this is a plain text file containing two lines of text. This is the beginning of a very short book, and this is the end. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and create a new project in our IDE. And we're going to create it from the command line app template, and we're going to call it text.io writing example. Now in order to work with our file in Java, we need to create a file object that points to the physical file that we're going to manipulate. And in order to make it point to that, we'll specify the path inside of the constructor call here. C book a book.txt and we're going to import the file class. Just remove this here. And then in order to write to a file, we need to create a specific type of object for that. We're going to use the print writer to write to our file. Now, arguably, there are other ways to output text to files, but print writer is what we're going to utilize in this tutorial. So we're going to create the print writer object by sending the reference to the file object to the constructor of the print writer. And here again, we need to remember that there might be circumstances where the file specified in the uh, or the file path specified when we create the file object is not pointing towards any physical file. This means that the uh, file is not found and this will yield a file not found exception from the print writer uh, constructor. And we need to take care of that. So we're using a try catch statement that capture, uh, catches the file not found exception object that is being thrown. And we could just replace this down here by writing some feedback to the user of the program. File not found. All right. With that out of the way, what we're going to do now is we're going to print some text to a file. And it's pretty simple to print. Actually, this bears a lot of similarities to the printing uh, using the system out print line statement. And we're going actually to use the println method on our print writer object as well. And here we are going to say, here is some additional text for our file. Now, when we're using a print writer object, we need to make sure that we close the uh, object once we are done using it. This is because we want to signify two things. One is that uh, the print writer object is told that we're not going to add any more text. So finalize whatever you need to finalize and print our text to the file. And also we are releasing our handle to the resource, which means that other people or other entities rather can use the file if we're in a situation where we are using a file or resource as a whole that cannot be accessed by multiple parties at once. So with this out of the way, we can try and go ahead and run our program. And once we run our program, we'll see that we produces no output. Uh, it produces no output, and that's because no uh, exception occurred, so it doesn't make any printout statements. So now we'll go ahead and try and open our file, and we'll discover that maybe we thought that we actually added text, but the behavior of the print writer is that actually it overwrites the existing text in our file. This is not always desirable. Sometimes we want to add additional text to the file, and other times, of course, it's very good that it clears out any existing data if we want to replace it with new data. So if we wanted to add additional text to a text file, what we need to do is, first and foremost, we need to read out what is in the file already. Now, I'm going to use a little trick here. <clears throat> so I'm going to create an array list containing strings, and I'm going to call it file contents. And we're going to use the diamond notation here and create a new array list object. And of course, we need to import this. Further, we need to read out the contents from the file. Now, to that end, 
we are used to using the scanner object, so I'll create a new scanner object. And we are using the scanner object on the file object reference that we have up here. And now we're going to create a loop here while s that has next we're going to see say file contents that is the array list that we created up here add so we want to add a new string to it and the string that we want to add to it is the next string encountered by the scanner object Now once we get down here, what we're going to do is we're going to create another loop as well. Actually, I'm going to create that loop here. And we're going to say for each string S in file contents, we're going to say p.println and then the value of S here. Oh wait, we already used that. Um, so we'll just call that file string and we'll call this file string as well this way. And here we got to remember as well that we don't want to overwrite the existing contents of the file. So it, what we're going to do instead is we're going to say file contents dot add and then add the new string of text that we want to have in it. So the functionality is as follows. The scanner is going to go in, read the contents of the text file as it is. Add each string of text that it finds in this uh, file to an array up here. Then we are going to add an additional string to the array up here, which wasn't in the text before. Wait, let's use a semicolon up here, which wasn't there before. And then we are going to uh, iterate through the entire content of the file contents array list and print each string found in that array through the println method of the print writer object. So now let's try and run the code. And now what we would anticipate is to see this string here twice because this string is already in our text file now. And now we are adding it another time. So let's see what happens when we run our program. We'll mop the, the text file here and we'll see here we added some text. Now I could go in here and validate this behavior by writing the initial text here again. This is the beginning of a very short book. This is the end. Now if my claim holds up, these four lines here should stay here and an additional line of here, some additional text for our file should be added. So let's go ahead and see how this behaves. So we'll just run this again. We don't need to do any changes. And now we'll go back and open our file again. And we'll see that now our third line of here's some additional text for our file has been added.